Okay, welcome. My name is uh, Tammy Burnett. I am the VP of Voter Services for um, the League of Women Voters for Smith County, Tyler. Um, we are restarting our membership meetings and tonight we're just going to kind of go over um, my role as VP of Voter Services, what I do and how I um, work with Vote 411 to be able to get information out to uh, Smith County voters um, on information about the candidates um, and share that information. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and start um, and just uh, I will say that we've changed quite a few things uh, now that COVID has um, a lot of things that were done before when we had face-to-face -face forums um, and we had more active uh, participation with the candidates. We've kind of had to find new ways to be able to do that. Um, and hopefully in the uh, near future, we'll be able to get back to that. But everything's pretty much virtual and the information that we do is virtual. So I'm going to share some information tonight. Um, on vote 411 that I put into the system. Are you able to see that screen? Okay, so this is the admin for vote 411. So what happens is that when we have an upcoming race, we find out specifically um, local races or uh, on the Texas legislation, uh, President Le uh, a lot of times the uh, National League puts a lot of information in, um, but our role is more to put local information in. So this is the system that we use to be able to put the information in, which is really uh, great. Um, I do want to say that one of the things that we work well with is we work with the board and we try to get information for the candidates on specific questions that are relevant to the position um, or the role that they're running for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put um, here is, this is how we set up questions for specific races. Um, uh, this is reset every uh, race. So a lot of them don't, um, don't fold over, but I'll show you those in a minute. So what we do is we meet with the board and we say, um, what information do we want to get from city councilmen, the trustees for TISD or TJC or constable mayor? What, what information do we want to be able to get? And we enter that information into the system. And if you can see, it's based on the actual position that they're running for. And they all get the same questions, um, which is really great because it gives them an opportunity for equity that they all are able to answer the same questions. Um, and then I'm going to go to email templates. The email templates are very helpful uh, because what we do is we basically, and I'm just going to be able to show this, is we send them an email and we say, dear candidate, it's pre-populated. The League of Women Voters invites you to enter your responses in the link below. And it just tells them what Vote 411 is. It tells them um, uh, just some general information about how to enter it. And then they get a pretty easy, it's a, it's, it's pretty uh, user friendly. And then they have a link and then they go in and they're able to access that account and they can put any information that they would like to put. Um, one of the uh, things that we really enjoy is their bio field. We don't have that here, but I'll go um, um, in their bio field. It gives them an opportunity to let, uh, the community know what what exactly do we need to know about this candidate they talk about their education they talk about their philosophy on public service they talk about how long they've been in the community they just talk about um, anything that they want to and there's limitations on how many words but there's, there's a lot of room to be able to know more about the candidate and as you know with vote 411 it's not just about knowing the five questions it's about getting to know the candidate um, themselves so they have an opportunity to be able to do that um so i'm going to come down here to campaign tracker and campaign tracker is where we go ahead and we put in the information so the local election the local race is coming up may 1st has uh, District 1 um, and 3 and 5 uh, for Smith County, Tyler Smith County, and then it's got TISD Board of Trustees. City Council rotates here, so it gives them an opportunity to put some information. So um, as you can see to the right, we send the invitation to them. Sometimes they actually respond, sometimes they don't. Um, on that invitation that is sent, we send them a reminder um, probably about a week afterwards and say, just want to remind you that you um, you haven't completed that um, and uh, gives them an opportunity just to 
to remember that. So I just want to open this up right here. So let's talk about um, TISD Board of Trustees and let's just say um, District 3. So if we put, if we open this candidate right here, if you'll see here, it's got his name, it's got some information about his education that he has. He doesn't have a lot of information. And we have the five pre-populated questions that are each one of them get. So if you look here, it talks about, you know, it's a full school finance question, what sources of advice on school policies. And they're able to answer any of those questions in the order or um, any way that they wish to do that. Now, I do want to show you that different, um, different candidates will put more or less information in there. So if there wasn't one here, I'm trying to find one that has a little bit more information. So if you'll take this one, um, Aaron Martinez was able to put a picture on here. He was able to put quite a bit of information. He's got information here. He's got information here um, and he answered the questions. But some of them don't um, respond um, and then there is no information. But in general, um, they respond with pictures and just some general information about themselves, which is very helpful to the consumer um, as to um, just getting some information about the candidate. Um, so, and then we can actually do a preview here so that we can just look at the actual candidates and just get some general information about them um, in the same different. There isn't very much right now because there aren't many candidates, but if you saw in the fall, there was quite a bit. And I will tell you that um, there was a lot more information that they put in there because the races were kind of more um, popular um, at the time. So this is actually how we do the administration for Vote 411 um, that we use. Um, and then I'm gonna stop sharing and how that we let Vote 411 know that we have completed and it migrates over to Vote 411. Now this is the actual website and you can come in here and put your information, just get some general information. I'm just gonna put mine right here. And all the information that was populated by that website that we worked with is right here. We can find out what's on our a ballot. We can explore. Um, and if you'll look here, um, it says next election, um, election municipal, Saturday, May 1st, view details. So it tells you more specifically of what's going on and you can look at that information and view all Texan election dates. It gives you, you can get information about what's going on in Texas. Um, you can just get some general information. So, well, sometimes these websites are a little finicky. Just want to show you that what we hear from a lot of people, they say, what district am I in? They're not exactly sure who they are voting for. So this is pre-populated, my zip code and my address. So it tells me um, who exactly, what district I am and who's running in my district. So if you'll see here, um, Greg Grubb is district one, which is my district. And then Stuart Hanna did not choose to put any information in. But if you look, when we put the information in the Vote 411 website on the admin, it comes over um, in a much cleaner, easier um, for people to be able to read and it answers the questions. And it's actually very helpful too, is that when you see um, the candidates side by side, um, it, you know, you've got the experience, the education, if they want to get the um, website information, um, their Facebook. We offer a lot of great um, resources for the voter to be able to find out more about the candidate. So also, too, is that um, it gives the questions side by side. So you can look and see how he answered this question, or you can answer, see how the other candidate answers the question. So Vote 411 in general um, is a great resource for um, any of the candidates to be able to um, look at that information. Now, 
Vote 411 has a lot of different um, information. It's got sample ballots, candidate ballots, and measure information. Um, if you want to register to vote, um, registration deadlines, it tells you when early voting is. It gives you all the general information that you could possibly need um, and just uh, general information. Now, there is a wonderful um, on the uh, flyer that I sent out. There is a wonderful um, video that is available. I won't play it for you tonight. I just want you to be able to see it. But to be able to see all the options that Okay. I'm going to share this real quick. This video right here on the uh, flyer that I sent out gives some wonderful information. You, you can't hear um, specifically. Hold on. I'm going to try and see if. Tammy, I think that's also on the Facebook page, isn't it? It is. Yes, it is. But this is a perfect example of all the wonderful videos that uh, League of Women Voters offers. So it gives you information on how to register. It also talks about information on um, how to look up candidates in other um, districts. It's just got some uh, wonderful information on how to use and the functionality of Vote 411. And it's very, very helpful. So I have that. We have that in the flyer that's sent out. We also have that on the Facebook. But it's just a wonderful resource um, because if you've never actually used it before. Sometimes it can be very um, enormous in all the different aspects that is on there, but it's uh, very helpful um, as far as uh, the functionality. So um, that's pretty much what we do before the candidates uh, begin. We send the information out. We would at that point too, if the candidates, if we weren't in a situation where we had um, COVID, we would ask, ask the candidates to participate in a forum, um, whether it be a, a Zoom forum or a face-to-face -face forum to give them an opportunity to answer questions. Um, most, ooh, we have one. Well, Betsy is coming in. We uh, give them an opportunity to be able to answer that. Most of the leagues right now are doing it in Zoom. Uh, one of the issues that we had right now is that Tyler Loop, several of the uh, television stations had already done a lot of those interviews. So um, we, at the point of us asking those questions were really just the same questions that they were asking. So we kind of just um, uh, supported um, the information that we got from right. them. Um, so, hi Betsy, how are you? So um, that's uh, how we handle the Vote 411 before. That's how we post the information. Um, and try to get uh, all the information out to the candidates on uh, how to vote, what to vote, um, and things like that. So that's kind of an overview um, of how we participate in Vote 411. We try to um, engage voters, try to get information on um, information that they could possibly want uh, from um, one of the nice things about monthly membership meetings is that it would be great if we could get questions that the our uh, League of Women Voters members would like asked. Um, do they feel like our questions are good? Do they feel like they're relevant? Do they know how to work through a vote 411 session? If not, we could certainly provide a training on that. But um, that's pretty much what we are trying to accomplish by um, each time we have a membership meeting, kind of focusing on a different part of what we do. Um, so that's kind of vote for one one in general. Marilyn, is there anything that you would like to add to that? Yeah, I think um, you noted that occasionally the candidates don't respond. And I think that's because this is a relatively new format and not all of them understand the importance of posting the information. And so for people who are out there and they log into 411 and they don't see their candidate information or the people that they're supposed to be voting for may not be 
responding, they might encourage those people to do that so that, because if you're looking at two candidates and one of them didn't respond, that's really a pretty loud statement. And so it's really important for people to understand that response is one way to get that information out to their constituents. It really is. And also too, is that um, this time, um, you know, we have to have their um, email address there, you know, we, we try to get some general information so that we can send out um, this information. So generally what I try to do is I try to get their phone number. And if I call them and say, you know, I'm Tammy with uh, League of Women Voters, we're doing a vote 411. We really want your voice to be heard. Um, the other candidate's going to be participating. We want to make sure that you get equal mm -hmm. um, voice in that. I'll tell you, we only had one, I think, that didn't respond. No, two, I'm sorry, two um, that didn't respond. But I think that this time was a little bit, we didn't have as many, but it was a little bit better. But that phone call is actually very helpful when they realize that, number one, you say the words we're a nonpartisan um, group because they don't always necessarily know who and what we are and what, what the, we're right. here not to um, endorse a candidate or to even, um, you know, have an agenda. We're there just to get the information out to the voter. So um, sometimes that phone call is actually very helpful and it gives them an opportunity to say, well, yeah, if he's doing it or she's doing it, yeah, I want my my voice on there too. Right. So I think that um, going forward, that might be something that we um, will probably do because I didn't do that in the fall and we didn't get a great turnout. So I'm hoping that that will be um, something that we can continue to do. Uh, Tammy, that first um, out, that first outreach that you make in the form of a it's written correspondence at that point, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Is there a deadline in there for the answers? Is it clear that they um, that they yeah. won't have any answers sh uh, on four one one if they don't respond by? There actually is. Let me see. I'm going to try to pull that up because I'd like for you to see it. Because keep in mind, we. Um, we put the wording in there, and if there's any better wording, we would love to have that opportunity um, to do that. But I'm just going to pull this up. Um, is they do get a deadline, and I tell you, they're not great at the deadlines. <laughs> Usually, yeah. the day of, I'm calling Marilyn and saying, "Hey, can we get you know, um, you know, nobody's uh, sharing this information with us." Yeah, let me pull this up right here. So if you look here on the email templates, um, the invitation itself um, has the candidate. And it, if you'll see this one, it says the League of uh, Women Voters invites you to respond to, at the link below before April 7th for your voter services, and then just gives a little bit of information. But we do um, absolutely have a deadline in there. Also, too, is that I put my name um, and my email address. Um, on this last one, I actually, on the... The reminder, I put my phone number um, because um, if you know they had any questions, I wanted them to be able to call me. But yes, uh, they do have that deadline in there. Now, let me show you the reminder. Um, this says, we've not received your responses to the voter's guide questionnaire and hope that you will use this opportunity to reach out to the voters in your area. Please respond by April 7th. Um, it's, it's very interesting that how many people do it the day of April 7th, which is fine, which is fine. But, um, you know, I, I think that the first email is just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the reminder lets them know that we're going to post it without their response. And that's kind of an initiative to say, yeah, let me, let me get my, my information um, out there. But yes, we do have dates on there. And if you'll see on this one, I did post my phone number. Um, you know, we had a candidate that didn't type very well and he wanted me to type it for him and I typed it for him. <laughs> but, well, and I think that we're learning through using this and Tammy's fairly new at this. Very new. That, that um, not everybody responds well to emails and a lot of people respond better to texts or phone calls. And so we're gonna have to use every resource we can in order to get out there. And sometimes it's hard to find that resource, a phone number or whatever, so that we can reach them because that's not always available. 
to the public. That's so. really helpful because um, it's about relationships. And I am this. I am very new to this. I just um, started doing it in the fall. And um, we had one candidate that I was sending it to her an email that um, we had used in the past. And I reached out to Marilyn and I said, I mean, it's unusual for this candidate not to respond. And she said, well, that's not her that's not the email that we as the organization because we've interviewed her and done other things that we use for her so when Marilyn sent me the updated email um then we got a response so sometimes it's um it's really Thanks about relationships yeah the uh the address that didn't work did you get that from the secretary of state information online which one was that sometimes that's not Yes, yes, that's an ongoing problem that we have. And to be honest with you, um, it's, we, you know, we, we got a lot of the information late in the game as far as um, the candidates and who was running and stuff like that. We don't get a lot of information on the Secretary of State um, website, like take VDR training. I mean, we have desperately tried to get some type of, I know that um, Smith County Voter Elections Office has one that they do the third Thursday of, but we wanted um, just a video on there. And we really were unable to get that from the elections office. We were unable to get that from the Secretary of State's office. So we're kind of limited in the information that we, that we do get. So I will tell you that um, a lot of leagues just do it themselves. They do their own videos. They do their own training and things like that. And I hope that that's something that we can do um, in the future because I think that that's really beneficial, um, you know, as far as recruiting new new VDRs and things like that. Well, I hope people um, will view this particular segment because I really appreciate that you've gone through the vote 411. As I said, it's a fairly new, several years old um, resource, but not a lot of people know about it. Not a lot of people know how to use it. So it's good that you went through it tonight. I really- Well, I think it's helpful to see how we enter the information beforehand and how it's crossed into the vote 411 after the fact. But I think also as a league, we need to look at these and say, you know, just like, you know, Tony was saying, I mean, is, I mean, the scripting, you know, if we're not getting a lot of responses on a time leak, do we need to change the scripting? Do we need to change the method? I mean, you know, I think that um, we have to think outside the box and say, how can we do a better job? And I think we're up to that. It's just getting, you um, just some feedback from our members uh, to say, hey, have you tried this? Or, hey, have you tried that? Is just really, really helpful um, to be able to do that. And, and I would just like to say one more time that, um, you know, VDR um, training um, is the third Thursday at the elections office, but they are down on VDRs right now. And they've also done a lot of pushback because they're getting uh, a lot of bad, um, uh, information back in the elections office. So they're being a little bit more strict. So I think that training and education is really key to be able to, uh, if, I think every one of us want to do a really good job um, when we're doing VDR, but I think giving someone a PowerPoint and saying, here, here you go. Um, I know that um, I was doing some at Texas College a couple of years ago, and I struggled with understanding um, students you know are they are they registered here are they registered in their hometowns and a lot of times they don't know so to be able to effectively um recruit people to vote um we have to know um all the rules and um training is the only way to be able to do that so well and then the other thing cammy yeah the student related, voters are hard yes <laughs> yes ma'am the, the other thing related to uh vdrs is that there is legislation to eliminate them pending. Yes. So we need to be following that. And if you'll go to the League of Women Voters Texas website on the advocacy page, you can follow all of the bills that have been introduced that are ones that the League is strongly either supporting or opposing. And of course, eliminating the VDRs is not something that we want to see happen because we know the impact that the VDRs make throughout the state. So we really want to watch that. 
Absolutely. You know, one of the biggest questions that we get um, on the Facebook post and um, when we have the, the newsletters go out, so many people say, I don't know what district am I, I'm in. I don't know what district I'm in. And um, when we did the coffee with um, Councilman Westbrook, um, you know, he was talking to us about the wonderful um, app that they have for the city of Tyler, which is great. But if you look at 411, if you put your address in there, it does it all for you. I mean, um, it's extremely, extremely helpful. And it gives you all the information pretty clear um, and concise. Um, so I think that it, it's wonderful to be able to have that with city, but we offer so much more on Vote 411 if we can just educate people as to what it is and how to use it. And I think that would be really, really helpful. Well, thanks for doing this tonight. <laughs> like I said, um, we're gonna post this on the Facebook. So we hope that um, we um, not only, when we send it out, um, people can share and send. So if there's anybody that, um, you might want to invite to be a member or just understand um, how to get information about uh, the candidates that are out there. I think the League of Women Voters has done just such a wonderful job to be able to address and give that information. So I hope that we all can, you know, take ownership of that and just help help our fellow Tylerites this, to be able to get that information. Is there still the is four one one still set up so that? people can use their phone to um, scan a barcode that will take them to 411? You know, I've heard of that. I've not tried it, nor have I seen it, but I'll tell you what, I can, I, you're like the third person that's asked me about that. And I, I don't know, but I'll tell you, I'll find out and I'll post that information on the Facebook when we post it, because that's a question that I've gotten a couple that of times. That may have been something that didn't work. Yeah, it may be, or it, or it's working now. I don't know. Well, if it's available, that would be something else that we could have on Facebook and on our website for people. Absolutely. To that would be very, very helpful. So, um, you know, I also encourage the candidates too, when I talk to them on the phone, to go on to vote 411 and look and see um, how, you know, how they present, uh, because it also is helpful, because if you can see they kind of piecemeal it together. And I think it's really helpful for them to see how it how it looks in the end. Um, so the next time they may want to change it up a little bit. Maybe they want um, a little bit of more information on how they feel about being in a public service role or how they feel about, you know, how their education or their job history has helped them to be in this role. So um, I really encourage the candidates to look at 411 and see how voters see them because um, I think that's that's helpful um, and I hope that they're doing that. I hope that and they are. Tammy, one more thing for the consumer of the vote 411. What I loved about it when we had elections in 2020 because you know how many people were on the ballot. It was just so enormous. Yes, it was. That you could go into 411 and you could pick your candidate you could put a check mark where the candidate that you were choosing, and then you could do that for each office that was being um, contested. And then you could print that off and take it with you so you don't have to remember all that. Stuff. Yes, absolutely. It was just, it How was helpful is that? Yeah, it was oh. a lifesaver. Absolutely. That is so, so helpful. I'll tell you what, in my district, if you can see in my district, um, we had one person that replied and one person that did not reply and somebody came to my door. Um, you know, they don't know um, my role with League of Women Voters. And I said, you know, I, I see that you didn't post anything on Vote 411. And I'm a member of League of Women Voters is, you know, is that it would be it would be great to be able to see that information. They didn't know what it was and they didn't know um, anything about it. But I hope they brought that back to the candidate and said, hey, we've got people asking why you don't have your information on vote 411. Um, so I think that the more, just like Marilyn, you said previously, the more that we let people know that this is something we're looking at and this is something that's important to us, I think it will really uh, motivate people to um, participate in it because it's helpful. You know some of the information that is in there is really heartwarming. I mean, when I look at 
you know, not, not like not just my candidates, but when I looked at the other candidates, when they talk about why they um, they want to serve in that role, it's quite inspiring. You know, I mean, and that's something that you can't just get on a, you know, on a resume or a CV or something like that. So I um, I, I, I love that we allow them to be able to put information, any information that they want about themselves on there. I think it's extremely um, helpful. So. Well, it looks like in a very short time, you've done an excellent job getting your head around all this. Well, I don't know about that, but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, uh, I think that uh, Vote 411 is a wonderful uh, system, and I just hope that we, um, we are able to advertise it and let people know a little bit more. Yeah. And the fall, they did the guides. They do the guides in the fall, right, Marilyn? Yes. But when they don't have many in the spring, it's just the online because of the cost factor of it. And watch out for well, yeah. every fourth uh, Wednesday for us to have another session on um, essential conversations with the league. And we'll be covering similar things to, we'd like to cover program and some other things that league members may not be altogether familiar with along with the general public, so. Absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for participating today. I, I very much appreciate it. We'll get this posted well, on the Facebook. Thank you very much, Tammy and, and Tammy, Marilyn. I really appreciate your feedback on the newsletters. I can't tell you how helpful that was. And it's such a great idea. And those are ideas that I think are really gonna make um, our newsletters, not just same old, same old, that really um, engage people to say, wow, I mean, the history and who we are and, and um, how we got here, I, I think are wonderful. So look, it's gonna be in the next newsletter. So thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye everybody. All right, bye. bye. Thank you. Bye, thanks. Thank you.